In this video I'll be going through the 2022 May-June IGCSE Physics Multiple Choice Extended Paper Version 1. Which measuring devices are most suitable for determining the length of a swimming pool and the thickness of aluminium foil? For a swimming pool we'd need to cover a large distance which we could do with a tape measure, but not a ruler. For the aluminium foil, a measuring cylinder is no good because that measures volume, a ruler would be too large, a micrometer screw gauge is what we'll want. So the answer is B. A man stands next to a railway track, a train travelling at 40 metres per second takes 2 seconds to pass the man. What is the length of the train? We know that velocity is distance over time, so we know that distance is equal to velocity times time. Our velocity is 40, our time is 2, which gives us 80 meters. So our answer is D. A speed time graph is used to describe the motion of an object, which quantities are calculated from the gradient of the graph and from the area under the graph. The gradient on a speed time graph is the acceleration. The area underneath gives the distance travelled, so our answer is A. On the moon, all objects fall with the same acceleration. Which statement explains this? On the moon, all objects have the same weight is incorrect, because our weight force is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration, and because objects will have a different mass, they will have a different weight. The moon has a smaller gravitational field strength than the earth. While this is true, it doesn't explain our statement. The weight of an object is directly proportional to its mass, which as you can see by this equation here, the weight of the object is directly proportional to the mass, with the constant of proportionality being the gravitational acceleration. So this is correct. They are not inversely proportional. If they were, our equation would look something like this. So the answer is C. A measuring cylinder contains 30 cm cube of a liquid. Some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches the 50 cm cube mark. The reading on the balance increases by 30 grams. What is the density of the liquid? Density is mass per volume. Our mass has increased by 30 grams, and our volume has increased by 20 cm cube, which gives us 1.5 grams per cm cube. So our answer is C. An object on the end of a string moves in a clockwise circular path at constant speed. The diagram shows the object as viewed from above. What is the direction of the resultant force on the object when it is in the position shown? The resultant force is our centripetal force, which is always towards the center, and so our answer is A. A beam is pivoted at one end as shown. The beam weighs 6 newtons, and its weight acts at a point x 40 centimetres from the pivot. A force of 4 newtons is applied to the beam, causing it to balance horizontally. In which direction, and where is the 4 newton force applied? To balance this downwards force, we are going to need an upwards force. Because the force applied to the beam is smaller than the downwards weight, knowing that torque is equal to force times distance, to produce the same torque, when we have a smaller force, we're going to need a larger distance. A larger distance means we must be on the right side of x. So our answer is D. On the diagram shown, what is the magnitude of the resultant force of the two vectors? The resultant magnitude is going to be this vector here, where we can imagine we have a right angle triangle with our 6 newtons here, our resultant force is our hypotenuse, which is equal to the square root of the squares of our two other sides, which gives us 10 newtons, so our answer is C. Three situations are listed. An object has a resultant force acting upon it, a moving object experiences an impulse, and an object is decelerating. In which situations is the momentum of the object changing? If a resultant force acts, then the velocity of the object must be changing, and so too must the momentum. When a moving object experiences an impulse, we certainly have a change in momentum, and if the object is decelerating, we have a change in velocity, and therefore we must also have a change in momentum. All three are correct, so our answer is D. A ball of mass 0.16 kilograms is moving forwards at a speed of 0.5 meters per second. A second ball of mass 0.10 kg is stationary. 
The first ball strikes the second ball. The second ball moves forwards at a speed of 0.5 meters per second. What is the speed of the first ball after the collision? We know that the initial momentum is going to be equal to the final momentum. Initially, the only momentum is the momentum of the 0.16 kilogram ball, which is its mass of 0.16 multiplied by its speed of 0.5. Following the collision, our 0.1 kilogram ball is moving at 0.5, and our 0.16 kilogram ball is moving at our unknown velocity. To solve this equation, we can first subtract this from both sides, and then divide both sides by 0.16. We'll also swap them around. which gives me 0.19 meters per second to two significant figures, so our answer is B. A mass hangs vertically from a spring. The mass is raised to a point P and is then released. The mass oscillates repeatedly between point P and a lower point Q, which energies alternately increase and decrease throughout the oscillations. The height oscillates, so too must our gravitational potential energy, so does the velocity, so so must our kinetic energy, and so does our extension, therefore so too must our elastic energy. B doesn't have elastic energy, and we wouldn't expect a change in internal energy, so our answer must be A. A car has 620 kilojoules of kinetic energy, the car brakes and stops in a distance of 91 meters. What is the average braking force acting on the car? We know that work is equal to force times distance, which means that force is equal to work divided by distance. The work is our kinetic energy that has been arrested, which is our 620,000. And our distance is just our 91, which gives me 6,800 newtons to two significant figures. So our answer is C. The diagram above shows a deep reservoir formed by a dam. On what does the pressure at X depend? The pressure at X depends on the amount of stuff above it. This property is described by the depth of the water, and so our answer is A. A sealed rigid container has a fixed volume. The container is filled with air. The container is placed in a freezer cabinet, and the temperature of the air in the container decreases, which row correctly describes what happens to the air in the container. As the temperature decreases, the kinetic energy of the air particles decreases, essentially by definition, and so too must the average speed. Because the container is sealed and rigid, as stated it has a fixed volume, which means the distance between the air particles is not able to change. So our answer is D. Two open containers are filled with water at room temperature. The containers have different shapes. From which container does the water evaporate at the greater rate, and how can the rate of evaporation be increased? Container 1 has a larger surface area of water exposed to the air, and so must have the greater evaporation. To increase the rate of evaporation, we need to increase the energy of the water, which means increasing the temperature. So our answer is B. The diagram shows a liquid in glass thermometer. A student wishes to check the marking of the upper fixed point on the thermometer. What should she do? Both boiling pure water and pure melting ice represent fixed points on a thermometer. The upper of these two is our boiling water, and so our answer is B. Water in a beaker gains thermal energy at a rate of 3000 watts. The water is at its boiling point. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is 2260 joules per gram. How long does it take for 250 grams of the water to vaporize? The energy required is going to be our latent heat multiplied by the mass, where our latent heat is 2260 and our mass is 250 grams, which gives me 565,000 joules. We know that power is energy per time, rearranging this for time is energy over power. We found our energy above, and our power is 3000 watts. Which gives me 188 seconds to three significant figures, and so our answer is B. A glass contains an ice drink on a warm and humid day. Water starts to form on the outside of the glass. What is the name of the effect by which the water forms? This effect is condensation. 
One end of a copper bar is heated to a high temperature, which mechanism is responsible for the transfer of thermal energy to the other end of the copper bar. This is from both the lattice vibrations and the movement of the high energy electrons. Not the lattice vibrations only, and our copper ions wouldn't move, and not the movement of the high energy electrons only. So our answer is B. The diagram shows a convection current caused by a piece of ice placed in a beaker of water at room temperature, which row correctly compares the temperatures and densities at water points P and Q. The water sinks down to point P because it's at a lower temperature. Being at a lower temperature means the particles are closer together, and so we also have a higher density. So our answer is C. The diagram shows a wave, which row is correct. The amplitude of our wave is this dimension here, which is one centimeter. Our wavelength is the full cycle here, which is our eight centimeters. So the answer is B. A sound wave is created by a loudspeaker that vibrates backwards and forwards 96,000 times per minute. The speed of sound is 320 meters per second. What is the wavelength of the sound wave? We know that the velocity of the wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, where our frequency here is given in per minutes. In order to fix this, we need to take our 96,000, and instead of dividing it by a minute, We'll divide it into seconds, where there are 60 seconds in a minute. 96,000 divided by 60 gives me 1600. Now to find our wavelength, we need to rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by frequency, which gives us that the wavelength is equal to the velocity divided by the frequency. Our velocity is 320, and our frequency is 1600, which gives me 0.2 meters, so our answer is A. A card is placed in front of a plane mirror so that its label is facing the mirror as shown. How does the image of the label formed by the mirror appear to the observer? Mirrors laterally invert images, and so we're going to expect an image like this. So our answer is C. A thin converging lens can produce both real and virtual images, which row describes a real and virtual image. A real image is where the rays converge to form the image. If they were to diverge, we'd get a virtual image. Virtual images cannot be projected onto a screen, and so our answer is B. The speed of light in air is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The critical angle for light in a transparent plastic material placed in air is 37 degrees. What is the speed of light in the plastic material? Recalling Snell's law, where if we're at the critical angle, we're starting in our plastic and moving into our air. At the critical angle, our second angle is going to be 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1, and so this term disappears. The refractive index of air is just 1. We know that the refractive index is the speed of light divided by the speed in the material, making that substitution. Multiplying both sides by V1, which is what we're trying to find. We now have our equation solved, so we just need to put in the numbers. Which gives me 1.8 times 10 to the 8 meters per second to two significant figures, so our answer is A. Which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is used by a remote controller for a television? For this, we use infrared waves. Which statement correctly compares radio waves and X-rays? Radio waves do have a longer wavelength, and because they're both electromagnetic radiation, they both travel at the same speed, so our answer is B. A student counts how many iron pins an electromagnet picks up when its power supply is switched on. Then she counts how many pins are picked up when the power supply is switched off. She repeats the experiment using cores made of different materials. The results are shown. Which core is made out of soft iron? When iron is exposed to a magnetic field, it behaves like an electromagnet, and so we will have pins picked up. However, when the power supply is switched off, the soft iron will quickly lose its magnetism and will be unable to pick up any pins. So our answer is D. A plastic rod is brought near to a plastic sphere suspended from a stand. The sphere is repelled by the rod. Why is this? 
the rod and the sphere have like charges is indeed a reason why this would happen. If they had unlike charges, they would attract. If the rod were charged and the sphere was uncharged, we would either expect nothing to happen, or if the charges on the sphere were able to move, we might expect attraction. And the same situation for D. So our answer must be A. Which unit is equivalent to a volt, that is, joules per coulomb? A resistor converts 360 joules of energy when there is a current of 3 amps in it. The potential difference across the resistor is 6 volts. For how long is this current in the resistor? For this we need to recognise that power is the energy divided by duration, and so the duration that we're going to find, rearranging this equation, is going to be the energy divided by the power. We have the energy, but we don't have the power. We also know that power is equal to current times voltage, where we know the current is 3 and the voltage is 6, which gives us 18 watts. Using this and our 360 joules of energy gives me 20 seconds, so our answer is B. The four circuits shown each contain four diodes. In which circuit is the direction of the current in the resistor always from the red terminal to the black terminal? When current flows in this direction, it is stopped here and is allowed to pass through here to the red terminal. In this case, it's also taking from the black, so we're good for one direction. Go in the other direction, our current is once again able to reach our red terminal, where it's stopped by this diode here, and is once again able to pull from our black terminal. So we have from the red and to the black for both directions, which means that A must be our correct answer. The diagram shows a circuit of six identical lamps connected by a battery. Which lamps are brightest? These lamps will get a third of the current each. Because the current splits into three, these lamps will get half of the current. Because the current splits into two, which means that point P will get the full current. Because it gets the most current, it must get the most power, which means it must be the brightest. So our answer is A. A digital circuit is made of two logic gates. Which row is correct for this digital circuit? This gate is an OR, and this gate is a NOT. If W was 0 and X was 0, then our Y would be 0, not 1, so A must be incorrect. If W was 0 and X was 1, then Y would be 1, so this one must be incorrect. If W was 1 and X was 0, then Y would be 1, and Z would indeed be 0. So our answer is looking like C, but just to check, if W was 1 and X was 1, then we'd expect Y to be 1, not 0, so D must be incorrect as well, which means our answer is C. A magnet is dropped vertically through a solenoid. This induces magnetic poles at both ends of the solenoid. Which magnetic poles are induced at position X in diagram 1 and diagram 3? The magnetic field of the solenoid is going to oppose the motion of the magnet. In diagram 1 this means we have a south pole here, which creates a repulsive force and opposes the motion of the magnet. In diagram 3 we have a south pole established here to attract our N, which once again opposes the motion of our magnet, meaning that on the other side we must have a north pole. So diagram 1 is a south, and diagram 3 is a north. So our answer is C. Which transformer can change a 240 AC input into a 15 volt AC output? The ratio of 240 divided by 15 is equal to 16. Therefore we must have a ratio of turns that calculates to the same. 800 divided by 40 is 20, so it's not A. 1000 divided by 25 is 40, so it's not B. 2400 divided by 15 is 160, so it's not C. 1200 divided by 75 is 16, so it must be D. What is the purpose of the split ring commutator in an electric motor? The magnetic field in a motor is fixed, so it's not these two. If the turning effect on the motor changes, then that would make for a poor motor. What we'd have would be more of an oscillator. The correct reason is D to ensure that the turning effect on the motor stays in the same direction at all times. How do the sizes of the two nuclei produced in a nuclear fission reaction compare to the size of the original nucleus? If it's fission, then both will be smaller, so our answer is C. Which statement about the radioactive decay of a substance is correct? 
It cannot be predicted when a particular nucleus will decay is correct, so this one's looking good. Placing a radioactive substance inside a lead-lined box prevents it from decaying is not correct, though it may shield the radiation. The decay always produces poisonous gases is not correct. The rate of decay increases if the substance is dissolved in water is incorrect, and is probably the opposite case. Our answer is therefore A. The diagram shows a stream of beta particles travelling in a line that passes between the poles of a magnet. In which direction will the beta particles be deflected by the magnet? For this I'm going to use the right hand slap rule. For this rule we point our thumb in the direction of positive charge movement. Because the charge is negative our thumb points in the opposite direction. Our fingers point towards the south pole. Doing so makes our palm face out of the page. And so our answer is D. Another way you may be taught is to use your left hand for negative particles. So if you point your left thumb in this direction, and your fingers once again south, your palm will likewise face out of the page. And we're done.